You're no longer a worthy opponent. Hey, what's up? This is Apology Man. You might know me from my fifth place showing at the Dragon Ball Fighters World Tour Finals, or my many other top eight placings in Dragon Ball Fighters major tournaments. And today, I'm going to be bringing you a guide on Tien. <laughs> Think my training is working? Before we start, be sure to subscribe to Dash Fight for more character guides and check out their website for all things FGC. I'd say Tien doesn't have a whole lot of standout normals compared to some other characters in this game, but I think the normal we have to talk about the most with them has to be his 5M. His 5M is easily his best poke and one of his most important buttons. He doesn't have a whole lot of other great pokes on the ground, I'd say. His 5H isn't that great. So you want to really poke with this 5M a lot. If you space it, it gets to be minus 2 at good ranges. And generally, it's going to be about minus 4, point blank. But it comes out at 9 frames, which is really fast, and it goes really far. Uh, the good thing about it too is it retracts him backwards a little bit after the opponent blocks it, which kind of you know lets you harass the opponent if they try to try to take their turn back after blocking it. You can threaten a 2M cancel if they try to hit a button right away, but if they're just trying to react and take a turn afterwards, you can just do this. I I, I poke with this very often when I play this character, and when you do land the move, he gets really good damage because it is a medium starter. So you can really melt the opponent's life bar if you land it. But the big thing besides his 5M, I'd have to say, on the ground, his other really important button you want to use is his 5S. Uh, you know, these sound like very basic options on paper, but they're incredibly important to use because you want to play a pretty pretty safe and uh, grounded neutral game with Tien overall. Uh, his his 5M and his 5S really keep the opponent uh, honest by just, you know, just the ranges they, they threaten. His 5S comes out pretty quickly. Uh, it comes out at 12 frames, which is pretty fast, honestly, considering most 5Ss. And you're going to be having meter with him usually later in the match uh he's generally an anchor character so you're gonna hit confirm this 5s into his combos and that's really really important to be good with them um if you space the 5s you can also kind of threaten a volleyball fist cancel this is actually something i like doing but it it requires a little bit of spacing and you can also go into uh dota on ray as well so you can kind of threaten those threaten those options after 5s but yeah Gotta say, 5M, 5S, those are the, the main, main buttons to use. Next, let's talk about Tien's special moves. Kind of going on the theme that Tien is a pretty basic character overall, his special moves kind of reflect this as well, with his Volleyball Fist series, which is a Quirt Circle Forward, Light, Medium, or Heavy. So his Light Volleyball Fist, which is Quirt Circle Forward, Light, is a pretty decent uh, Larry style poke it hits low which is good as well but it's kind of pretty low to the floor so you don't really want to poke with it the same way you would with a traditional lariat like bardock for example but uh, like i mentioned earlier uh i like doing 5s into light volleyball fist it's a gapless block string and you can kind of frame trap with it as well and you can kind of poke with that to get in, which is pretty good. And it's good to call your assist afterwards because it is minus five on block. So, you know, you will be minus. So having an assist to kind of take your turn afterwards is really good. And you can kind of like set up a cross up with it or go for a dragon rush. Uh, yeah, so that's really good. Uh, his medium volleyball fist actually goes full screen, which is pretty insane. And it has a little bit more startup than the light volleyball fist, but it's good because it actually has a guard point on the first four frames of it, which is pretty nice. Uh, you can use it to absorb some projectiles from full screen to kind of get in. And you can also use it as a defensive option if somebody decides to take their turn after a vanish. Like that. So, as you can see, when I landed the Volleyball Fist, I went into kind of a chain series afterwards. And I only It's pretty simple to do. You just 
hit lights over and over and towards the very top you want to time it so you get the smash fall up which is what gets you extra damage uh, see at the very end if you notice on the left there it says smash you want to kind of time your volleyball fist ender just so you get that smash ender so that you can get the extra damage and afterwards you want to also be able to see if you have an assist that lets you combo off of the volleyball fist that is also incredibly important so if if you do land it you want to see if your assist can combo into it. Uh, I can use a uh, Piccolo assist here pretty easily and get a nice air combo afterwards. So that's really important. Uh, another special move I think that's really important as well is his Dodon Ray. Uh, I was talking about it earlier, but I think more so than his ground Dodon Ray, the most important Dodon Ray has to be his air Dodon Ray. If you notice, he actually falls to the floor while doing this. Pretty similar to Krillin's uh, air Kamehameha. Uh, if you hold down, it'll freeze them in the air, but you generally don't really want to do that. Sometimes you want to, if you want to grab the hit them in the air, but this is a huge part of his neutral game. You kind of want to combine it with the fact that you're threatening on the floor, you know, using 5S and 5M, and then the opponent's like, wow, this is really annoying. I'm going to start shooting multiple key blasts at him. And then what you do is you just jump over and go bam. And it jails into vanish because it is a beam. And if it hits, you know, you get a combo after it as well. So it's, it's definitely really good to do. It's also good to do off of his uh, jumping S. Uh, it, it actually combos into the air Dodon raid just like this, which is really good. Uh, works at some pretty decent ranges. But yeah, you want to use the air Dodon raid in his neutral game. It is definitely one of his most important pokes. Next, let's talk about Tien's assist. In my opinion, his go-to assist is his A assist, which is Dodon Ray. It is a really fast assist, it is a beam assist, and it comes out at 29 frames, point blank, which is really, really fast. And it is really good in the neutral game just to kind of counter call your opponent, just kind of, you know, just dash in with it. it, it, it it'll basically cover your ground approach slash air approach really really well and if your opponent jumps at you or tries to hit you with the normal or something uh like this you can actually call dodon ray and kind of get a counter hit punish on them because just how active it stays out and how high it pops the opponent up it's really easy to confirm off of one of the drawbacks of the assist though is that it is 20 frames of block zone for really short but even though it is pretty short in terms of its block sun you can still make it a gapless 50 50 in the corner with super dash this is really tight to do but it is still technically possible so even though it is on the shorter side of block stun, you can still get some pretty decent mix-ups with it. It also has a bit of an explosion hitbox, so that visual makes uh, Dragon Rushes even harder to attack. And you know, it has low block stun, so you can Dragon Rush like pretty soon into it. I highly recommend this assist. I think there's a lot of application for it. It's really good for combos as well. So yeah, I, I, I basically always pick it. Tian's next assist is his B assist, which is telekinesis. Uh, it summons Chaozu, who has a tracking property special. It's really plus on block. As you can see, it is plus 40 on block. The problem with it, though, is its tracking isn't the best. If you see here, I'll try to make them block it while they do a dash jump. As you can see, it just whiffed like that. So it's tracking isn't amazing, so I wouldn't really rely on it all the time to catch your opponent in the air. Uh, but I think one of the better ways to use it is using a beam type special or some sort of full screen option to keep them in place. So let's try using a Videl's jump S with it. I think that's like a good way to use it. You kind of want to you know, just like block string into it. And then you can kind of like take your turn. You can do 5S and kind of get in like that. So there's ways to use it, but I think you kind of need to have a canned sequence of uh, 
projectile into B assist to really get the best use of it. And you know, it's a lot of block stun and a lot of hit stun as well. As you can see here, it is like 60 frames of hit stun and it keeps them standing too. So, you know, you can get some nice resend mix ups if you play Majin Buu. Another character that I think uses the B assist well is uh, Gogeta. Uh, you can just do like 5S like that, and then you know, you can kind of get some good mix ups, and you can get like some decent high lows with it as well because it has a lot of blocks in. So it's a pretty decent assist. But one thing to uh, make sure you gotta be careful with when using this assist is if you kill Chaozu. Uh, Chaozu's dead, so you know, how do you call the assist? Look, what, what happens when Chaozu's dead? Nothing. <laughs> it's pretty funny, but uh, yeah, I guess just make sure to look out for that so your assist doesn't become completely useless. Also, one more thing about the B assist is it builds you a tiny, tiny bit of meter. Tiny bit of meter. And finally, his C assist, which I can't really recommend that much, but you know, it's a decent C assist, has some tracking. It's his uh, volleyball fists. Uh, he kind of tracks to you and does uh, does his auto combo. Um, it's okay. it's okay. It has good block stun. It's plus 55, which is pretty high. So you can definitely get some like good mix-ups with it. But you know, it's a C assist, so it has a lot of cooldown. And I don't think it's that worth it compared to his other assists. I think his A assist is usually his go-to assist. Next, let's talk about Tian's pressure. When it comes to talking about Tian's offense, we gotta talk about his EX Volleyball Fist, which is done with Core Circle Forward into Heavy. This move is a command grab on the ground, and it actually has some guard point properties as well, but it's not, I wouldn't overfocus on using it that much. It is good to throw in, especially if you're kind of conditioning your opponent with Dragon Rushes and his cross-up jump M. You can get them to start teching the Dragon Rush, and if they react to the EX Flash for the Dragon Rush, you can get it with the EX Command Grab. That's a good way to condition them. But I think the real, the real star of the show when it comes to Tien is his Air EX Volleyball Fist, which is really, really good because it comes out so fast. If you see that, it comes out at 13 frames and it also has armor on it as well. So if you do this properly right off of the ground, it is really fast. So if done properly, you can actually get it to hit at 17 frames. This is a 17 frame overhead that is so fast. It's completely unreactable. And it's really good to use with his uh, sparking pressure. You can just kind of jump cancel, throw it in there. You can uh, do a 6M into it and then add it at the end over there. It is super important. After basically any instant air dash, you have the threat of using it as an overhead, as like a late overhead like this, or you can mix up going low and it's completely unreactable. Really important to do. Definitely it takes a little bit of practice to do. You do have to TK it which is a, a tiger knee input. So you do quarter circle forward and then you end in up forward and then you time your heavy press so that you do it when you hit the air. If you do it too fast, you'll get a ground command grab. That's kind of the thing you're trying to avoid. A lot of TM players, when they mess up doing the TK, they get the, the ground one. But if, with a little bit of practice, you, you can get it down. I mess it up too, so <laughs> not immune to it. But if you get it kind of slower, uh, you get it at like 18 frames sometimes. I'm not messing it up properly. <laughs> yeah, see, you can hit it at 18 frames. It's still pretty fast, even if you kind of mess it up. So it's not all that bad. Uh, the next uh, thing I think we should talk about when it comes to Tian's pressure is his medium knee, which is 2 on 4, quarter circle back, uh, M. So if you notice, after he does his medium knee, he kind of pops up a little bit. What this means is he can actually get a air dash out like that. So while this is kind of tricky to block as it is because it is an overhead, you know, if you're, if you're uh, conditioning your opponent to look for a lot of other stuff, they can just get hit overhead like that. And it's, you know, it'll get them. But the real thing that you're trying to do when making the opponent block this is to make them block an assist afterwards so that you can do a 50-50 with it. 
And that, in my opinion, is one of the best ways to use it. You can go low like that, or you can go overhead like that. And this is really difficult to block. And if for whatever reason it hits, the assist actually lets you confirm into a full combo just like this. Tien has really strong pressure and it leads to a lot of damage when you land it. Next, let's talk about Tien's combos. Tien doesn't have the most complicated combos in this game, I'd say, as it kind of goes in line with how I said he's a pretty basic character. Uh, but he has a few interesting roots. Uh, I'll show a corner combo here in the corner. It's a pretty simple combo. We're gonna have the notations for these combos below as well in the description and at the bottom of the video. But, uh, but yeah, it's not too complex here. I'd say the hardest part about this combo is linking the 5L after that 5H there. It only works in the corner. And you end with the light knee. You want to end with the light knee there, and it lets you easily combo into his level 1 super. The nice thing with Tien is he does a lot of damage because his level 1 super does a ton of damage. Probably the... I think it's the highest level 1 damage in the game. For not counting like base Goku, like, but uh, it, it is really high damage, and that's a huge part of why people even have uh, Tien on on their team in the first place, because of just how high damage he has. But yeah, you want to link the jump S into the super dash there. That's a, a new combo part that he got somewhat recently, and it works uh, mid screen as well too, which is pretty pretty nice. The jump S into super dash. But yeah, that's an important combo to be able to do with him. The next combo I'd say that is pretty important to do, as I have mentioned that his 5M is one of his better pokes, uh, it's going to lead to really good damage as well. So if you ever do land one of his 5Ms and you have about like two bars, maybe one and a half, you can spend it on his EX Volleyball Fist and you can do this combo. Uh, you have the smash already used, so you have to go into Vanish there at the end and go into Dragon Rush. But yeah, we'll have the notation below. It does a lot of damage. <laughs> it did 6,600. That's a ton, a ton of damage. But yeah, it's not too difficult, I'd say. You want to use the M Volleyball Fist after the 5H here, as it goes all the way to the other side of the screen. And then you want to do the EX follow-ups. And what's interesting about the EX follow-ups is if you do the EX launcher into the EX slam down like that, you just do this by pressing H, it lets Tien recover early and basically become one of his clones at the bottom and lets you get a relaunch afterwards. This does a lot, a lot of damage and is super important if you want to do good damage with Tien by himself. Next, let's talk about Tien's overall game plan and some of the strengths and weaknesses of it. Tien, in general, is usually played in the anchor position in most teams, as on point, he doesn't really have the neutral game that you're looking for to fight some of the stronger characters in this game, at least in my opinion. Uh, he's really meter reliant as well to perform uh, some of his stronger options, like his EX Volleyball Fist and his uh, EX Volleyball Fist follow-ups. Uh, I think playing him in the anchor position is usually the best place to do it, and he gets the extra damage buff with Limit Break, which helps him just become an amazing robbery character and make really good comebacks. On point, you know, when he spends his level 1, uh, he does a fair amount of damage to himself when he does his own level 1. But when he's in the anchor position, he actually takes less damage to himself when he does a level 1, as you can see right there. And when he's in Sparking, he takes no life loss at all, as you can see. It's very deliberate that the developers wanted him to be played as an anchor character, and I think it makes a lot of sense with just how scary he is in the anchor position. Uh, when I'm making comebacks with this character, I think one of the strongest things about him is because he has a multi-hitting jump L, he's really good at just bringing the opponent to the floor with his super dash. And then you can go for a high low right there as you can do air dash high or air dash low. And the threat of jump canceling into an EX overhead is also really potent as well. And all these lead to crazy damage as you saw earlier. 
Like, if you get hit by one of Tien's, you know, like, 5Ms in, uh, in neutral, like, you could just die right there. You know, if you just do the EX follow-ups and whatnot. But, but, but yeah, I, I really think you want to play him in the, in the anchor position. I think that's his strongest role. Uh, his level 3 Oki is pretty strong, too. Uh, if you land a level 3 with him, he actually gets pretty strong Okizeme afterwards. Uh... So if I make the opponent block here, I can do a safe jump uh, overhead and then do late EX chop just like that. This is what I do after most level 3 knockdowns as it's basically a 50-50. They have to guess on either the high uh, overhead or the low. And I think that's what makes him really, really potent as an anchor character. And man, he just does so much damage. You'll, you'll be surprised how many matches you can just rob with this character. And you know, he has a great assist. So yeah, play him, play him in the anchor. And that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys liked it and maybe learn how to play Tian Shin Han and Dragon Ball Fighters. Maybe try him out on your own team. Uh, make sure to leave a like and comment below on your thoughts about the video. And you can also check out all the things shown in this video in the text version via the link in the description below. But yeah, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more.